Research for model railroading has certainly got a lot easier with the internet. And to demonstrate, all the way from Australia, today we're going on a virtual cab ride along a closed rural branch line on the other side of the world. So, hang around for a cab ride with a difference to see what great modelling potential this area has. I suppose I better tell you a little bit about the Rothbury branch line. It was known as the Northumberland Central Railway and part of the North British Railways. This was a 13 mile or 21 kilometre single track branch line from Scotts Gap to Rothbury in the Northumberland region of the United Kingdom. Construction began in August 1869 and the line opened for business just over a year later in November 1870. Scotts Gap, or whatever they wanted to call it, was opened in July 1862. It was located on the main 25 mile or 40 kilometre long Wansbeck Valley Railway, or the Wanny Line, which ran from Morpeth, 11 miles to the east, to the yet to be built junction with the Border Counties Railway, 14 miles away at Reedsmouth to the west. Originally, it was thought that the Rothbury branch could be extended further to the north, becoming an alternate route from Newcastle upon Tyne via Scotts Gap and on to Edinburgh in Scotland. Sadly, that didn't happen, and it was mainly used for some rural freight, mineral transport, and passenger services to Morpeth. Like many of the smaller British railways of the era, these lines struggled to remain competitive as technology improved, especially once road transport took hold following World War II. And passenger services were withdrawn in September 1952. Along with hundreds of other small lines, thanks to the beaching cuts, the Rothbury branch was permanently closed in November 1963. Sadly, it didn't even last a century. In our virtual tour or cab ride series on the Rothbury branch line, these are just some of the places you'll discover as we explore the features of the Northumbrian countryside. and see why it could be such a great choice for modelling. So let's begin the cab ride, starting from Scotts Gap Junction. This overlay of the 1897 ordnance maps from the National Library of Scotland shows the layout at Scotts Gap, along with my track plan, which actually includes access from the main to the yard on the up, or Morpeth side which was shown only on a much later map. Services here included a single passenger platform on the southern or upside, two parallel loops and two sidings that served a goods platform and warehouse. A cattle dock led to the very busy adjacent auction mart and from which regular weekly sheep auctions are still run today. There was also a short spur built for the locomotive turntable to turn the Rothbury locos. However, as it turned out, many of the Rothbury services actually continued up the line onto Morpeth. This is a modern view of the Scotts Gap station area from the road bridge. I do prefer, however, the charm of the steam era, with a couple of 06 OJ class locos getting ready for their day's work and another 060 arriving with a passenger train from Reedsmouth heading up the line to Morpus. Well, it would appear that our loco is all steamed up and ready to go. So all aboard and take your seat in the Grizzly Brake 3rd coach. For the first several hundred yards of our journey, the down train to Rothbury races westward along the Wanny line, pretending to be double track. 
after passing under a typical Northumberland sheep crossing bridge, which is another interesting structure to model, our train veers away to the north. We cross over several small burns or streams with some great stone bridges for modelling inspiration. And pass a spot on the left where there used to be a short tramway off to the now long abandoned Artican Quarry. Over to your right, you can catch glimpses of the Rothley Crags, a rocky outcrop of sandstone rising out of the surrounding farmland. This is pleasant rural landscape, with some crops and grazing and a gradual 1 in 75 increase in gradient. You pass under several more old stone bridges which are also typical of this area. And uh, did, I, did I mention that I think they would be great to model? And before you know it, you've passed under yet another stone bridge and arrived at Long Witten Station. Three miles into your journey, you've arrived at the highest point of your trip at around 216 metres above sea level. When Long Witten Station was first opened in 1870, this was originally a private station known as Rothley. It became a public station in April 1875 and was renamed Long Witten, even though the village it was named after is quite a few miles away. An old wooden passenger coach at the southern end of the platform provided additional storage space for the simple timber booking office and waiting room that was Long Witten Station. As well as offering basic passenger and goods services, there are also private mineral connections here. So if you're up for a special treat, we might take a quick gyrocopter flight over this area and see what we can see that you might like to include in a model landscape. And we'll start with a quick trip over the nearby Rothley Lakes. Now these are man-made fishing lakes and were created in the late 1760s as part of Sir Walter Blackett's pleasure ground that was centred around Wallington Hall just south of Scottscap. The UK National Trust now manages large parts of this area. And this Google Street View gives you a great idea of the various landscape elements you would need to include in a model. Modern fences, hedgerows, stone fences and sheep. Lots of sheep. So let's take a quick trip out to have a closer look at the Rothley Crags, a rocky outcrop of sandstone rising out of the surrounding farmland. And on the crags? a prominent landmark known as Rothley Castle, an 18th century Gothic folly built by Sir Walter in 1755 to resemble a medieval castle, even though there was already a genuine medieval tower on the same site. Oh well. <laughs> About a mile to the north is a similar Gothic folly built around the same time, Codger Fort, and is in the form of a triangular gun battery. And finally, we come back in over Rothley Lakes Lodge. And you can stay there if you're in the area. Before we head out to quickly inspect the two tramways. The first was a private tramway to Longwitten Limestone Quarries and Lime Kiln, which was shown as closed in the 1897 maps. The other section from the Lime Kiln to Green Leighton Quarry appeared on later maps in 1949. And again, this area, a quarry, <laughs> is managed by the National Trust. Meanwhile, back near Long Witten Station, one thing I really noticed from my Google Earth tour of the area is the number of sheep in the area. 
and because they have lots of sheep, they need overnight protection in a sheepfold. And I really like the large stone fenced sheepfold in a nearby paddock to the north of the spur at the Rothbury end of the Longwitten Yard. So if you are modelling this area, you will need one, and this is a beauty. Longwitten Station also included a very long siding servicing the tramway to Longwitten Colliery, 1.5 mile or 2.4 k to the southeast, which was closed again before the 1897 map was drawn. After an eventful stop, it's time to bid farewell to Longwitten and continue on. But let's recap what we've seen on our virtual tour so far. Lots of history, beautiful stone structures, bridges, castles, follies, etc. There's a tapestry of landforms and paddocks like the one straight underneath us now. There's a variety of industries to choose from, different fencing styles and lots of magnificent stone buildings. Did I mention stone? Look, all of this research goes to understanding the reason for being, for getting ideas that you can model or recreate to help you pick a period or imagine that everything is still open and run it as modern image. There's lots more still to come in the series, so make sure you like, subscribe, all of that sort of stuff to keep in touch. I'm Stephen Spry and cheers for now.